on behalf of the great city of Cleveland and the Cleveland Department of Public Health and the American Heart Association, we thank you for your presence at the 2017 Go Red for Women Salute to Women's Health. To begin our program, we will call up to the stage Pastor Grady Stevenson, who is the chair of our Black History Month. Pastor Stevenson. Uh, hello and good afternoon to everyone. At this time, we just want to begin our program with a, a small prayer. So if you wouldn't mind just pausing where you are, and we're going to acknowledge uh, our Creator for giving us an opportunity to um, bless those who need um, direction in their health care and all that we do. So let us bow our heads. Our kind and merciful Father, we thank you and we give you praise. We honor you for this day for your word tells us that this is a day that you have made and that we should rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your direction, for your kindness, for your love towards each and every one of us, for those who give us instruction and for the heart to take instruction. We ask you, Father, that you just bless this program, that you anointed God, that others might be blessed. This we ask in your son Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. At this time, we ask Director Merle Gordon to the podium. Thank you, Francis. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Go Red for Women, a salute to women's health here in City Hall Rotunda. It's great to see everybody wearing red today. It's great to see all of these partners and all of these tables set up so that you can learn so much about what you can do to improve your health, to give you tips on food, to give you other tips on exercise and maintaining your health. And we really thank you all for being here as well. We thank everybody who's also come down here to pick up these educational materials and show, um, showcase really what this is all about. I also want to um, thank all the folks from the Cleveland Department of Public Health who are here, who have all the information as well at our table. Um, including some water for you, which is also very, very important um, regarding heart health. Heart health has hit my family very, very hard. Um, I have uh, many members of my immediate family who all have that zipper um, on their chest, the permanent zipper, um, and I know what it's like to have to get through that type of, get to that point to have to have that type of surgery. It's very, very challenging. Um, it's why I wake up every day and I try to exercise every day and I try to live a healthy lifestyle because I really want to avoid that and I really try to promote that in the work that I do and in my lifestyle, my friends and my family as much as possible. Um, we want to um, let you know too, we're going to be hearing from um, a few folks here this afternoon. Um, Dr. Ginwala is going to be here, who is at Case and University Hospital, um, and we're excited to hear what she has to say here today. Um, we are also here to honor April Thompson, who is putting these um, lovely little dishes together in a half of an orange. I've seen so many people walk around with them, and they smell delicious. Um, and we're going to honor her work as well. Um, but I am going to turn this over to Chief uh, Natoya Walker Miner, who serves as our Chief of Public Affairs here for the City of Cleveland, to make a few more remarks. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day! It is so appropriate that we are celebrating uh, today and about being heart healthy on this Valentine's Day. One of the things that Pastor Stevenson said is the heart to take instruction. And the reason why we're here is really to continue to be educated and informed about how to take care of ourselves. Women tend to take care of everybody else other than who we are. But when our bodies break down, when our heart breaks down, when our diets are bad and we are exercising, we are susceptible to illness, and we then become susceptible to heart problems, cardiovascular disease. 
And so we're here to educate and inform about how to take care of ourselves. And the Bible calls each of us to take care of our temples. And when it uses that language, it's talking about our bodies. We only get one, so we have to invest in it. So we have to invest in it through diet, exercise, and relaxation so that we can take care of all of the responsibilities that we have, and there are many. We have our children, we have our parents, we have older aunts, uncles, siblings, sometimes we take in other children, sometimes we take in people from the church and the community. And we have to take care of our hearts. So taking care of our hearts, taking care of ourselves, is a matter of the heart. So please listen, learn, educate, and share with another woman about taking care of her heart so that she can be heart healthy. Thank you, and God bless you. We have a couple um, awards to give out today. We want to honor the American Heart Association. So Brenda, if you would join us, please. Brenda Parks is the Director of Multicultural Affairs for the um, American Heart Association here in Cleveland, Ohio. And we want to thank you for the work that you do. Um, I will turn this over and, um, and Chief, you can perhaps sure. read a few of these. This is the 2017 Heart Healthy Month. We've been in partnership with Brenda for a very long time. Mm -hmm. She brings a lot of resources to us and we share. This is a true partnership. And it's because of partnerships that Clevelanders and the work that we do through public health and other departments in the city are so much better for partnering. Because it, we can't do this alone. There's an African proverb that says it takes a village and this is a part of our village. This is a part of our public health village. So at this time, Brenda, we'd like to give you this, honoring 2017 Heart Healthy Month. And uh, this is just a token of appreciation from Mayor Jackson and Department of Public Health. Thank, Thank you. you for continuing Thank to be you. a strong partner to educate and inform and to promote women's health. Oh, I'm so thankful. Thank you. This is awesome. Now we want to give honor to April Thompson, who's busy handing out food to all these people in line. Um, while she makes her way up here, let me tell you a little something about, about April. She sounds like a really, really cool woman. Um, she had a dream, and her dream was to be a chef, to cook for people, which I think is, there's no greater gift. Um, while balancing the, ta the the task of being a personal chef for high-profile professionals, including top NBA, NFL, and um, baseball players, um, and several entertainment personalities, she also found time to author three cookbooks, My Kid Won't Eat, Baby on a Budget, and Cooking by Colors, which sounds really awesome. In addition, she's owner of Sweet Chicks Custom Cupcakes, which I'm sure they're they're healthy versions of cupcakes too. Um, canine <laughs> culture um, and couture, sorry, canine couture, an organic pet food line, and Tiny Tots Gourmet Pavy Food. Over the past year, April has also linked up with many in the culinary industry to start a mobile, mobile cooking service called the Cul Culinary Mafia. Or interest to hear what that's all about. <laughs> But one of the most impressive things that April does is Shoulder to Shoulder. It's a Cleveland-based organization that provides healthy bi-weekly meals to those less fortunate. She sponsors families um, and also provides food and shelters for the holiday, holidays and provides nutrition-based education for children in the city of Cleveland and social etiquette classes which is also very, very important, and growing, and growing indoor herbal gardens, probably to help give food more flavor. So, um, but her proudest accolade, as she uh, indicates, is being a mom, which is really great. We want to congratulate her for that. And with a never-ending hunger for success and energy level that would render others <laughs> lifeless and most likely exhausted, the future is so bright having April Thompson in it. And hopefully those of you who tasted her food today can attest to that. So April, we have recognition for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, y'all make me cry. I cry That's a little. Everything. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Brenda. 
You have been a colleague and a friend, not just to the health department proper, but also to the Healthy Cleveland Initiative and certainly the Cleveland Office of Minority Health. So we thank you and we thank you, Chef April, for all that you do. Now at this time, we will have remarks from our councilwomen, Donna Brady, Councilwoman Mamie Mitchell, and Councilwoman Phyllis Cleveland, in that order. Thank you. Good afternoon. I hope that all of your hearts are swelling today for St. Valentine's Day and that you all have a nice evening. Um, you know, today is a very special day for women. Heart, the, the heart, um, I learned about the heart very, very young. In April of the year that I was going to turn 10, my grandfather died of a massive heart attack. He had just retired from City Hall and he was only 64 years old. And then in December of that same year after I turned 10, my father had a heart attack at the age of 40. From that point on, April, I learned the value of diet. My mother was taught how to cook for my father's heart condition to lower his cholesterol. We didn't have all the cholesterol drugs then. He had to lower his cholesterol through diet and exercise. And so, um, you know, we weren't so fond of that food and went <laughs> right away, but, but, you know, that's what we got. So, um, you know, I have to be grateful for that part, um, for that experience. And, and by the way, my father just passed away at the age of 92. So, you know, from 40 to 92, you know, he's very important. Stop smoking. He had to stop smoking. And um, so anyway, um, what I would like to say to everyone here today is that it is very, very important for you to get your health screenings. There was a time when the medical profession only thought men got heart attacks. Well, we've learned since then that women get heart attacks. Women have cardiovascular disease. And so it's very important for you to go get your screenings from your doctor or from a health center, wherever you can go. And those, because when they do those health screenings, they can identify things that are potentially um, threatening to your heart. Hypertension, high cholesterol, they can even, you know, test you for diet, they will test you for diabetes when they do a panel. I'm probably not telling anyone in this room this, but this is for the people who are going to be viewing this on, on channel uh, 20. So, you know, um, all I can say is what everyone else has said, and you've got to drive it home, diet, exercise, stop smoking, you know, do something fun, relax, Get, you know, do something to control your stress. Um, but, you know, I learned the hard way, you know, with my family. And the other thing is, learn the history of your family. If you have a history of heart disease, you are more susceptible to having heart disease yourself. So um, thank you all for coming. It's a wonderful day for all of us. And um, we look forward to uh, many more. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with, with, with all of us, especially for, well, you know, it's good for men too, but basically I think um, the women more or less are the, we are the ones that take care of their mothers and fathers when persons 
become old and cannot really take care of themselves, then we go and, and, and take care. And that's the reason why I think as of females we learn more about this is how we should work, this is what we should do to be able to take care of our family, to be able to take care of those, our grandkids, to be able to take care of every, everyone that we know. Basically, that is really what happened to uh, my family. I just, some of us, uh, we, we often have, at least our parents do often, have high blood pressure, et cetera. And there's no reason why, but it, it, it does happen in certain groups and certain families. So therefore, we just have to work hard. We have to watch what we eat. We have to, we have to do exercise. And basically, please, we got to stop eating neck bones. <laughs> I don't know if you guys did, but in, when we were kids, this is what we had, basically. A lot of um, fat meat and things like that, but then we learned about that's not really what's good for us, that we could take things in the lean, the, the lean meats, fruits and vegetables. I won't talk uh, too long, but I'm just glad I'm here, and I'm thinking that we all should be glad that we're here, because if something went wrong, we wouldn't be here. We would be at some other place. So thank you for uh, having me participate in this program. But I hope to see you guys next year. So thank you so much, and take care. Bye-bye. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> right now. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. This is one of my favorite occasions in the calendar of the city of Cleveland in uh, Black History Month and Go Red, uh, Go Red, um, I always get it wrong. Go Red for Women Day. Uh, and I'm, I'm very honored and, and grateful that you all always uh, invite us to come and speak. Uh, um, interesting note, I was just sharing with my colleague, uh, Councilwoman Donna Brady, the three of us are actually on the city's uh, Health and Human Services Committee, so that, that really means something. Uh, and everyone mentioned that uh, we as women, you know, we're the caretakers of our society, our, the nurturers, and we give and we give to everyone else, and sometimes we forget to save a little for ourselves. So this is really an, an important occasion and an important event. Chief Walker Minor, uh, Director Merrill Gordon, um, uh, Ms. Parks, congratulations and thank you for all that you do with the American Heart Association. Dr. Genwala, you know, we always have uh, an illustrious speaker from one of our hospital, one of our world-class hospitals, and they always give us great information. Uh, and also, uh, I'd like to acknowledge Director Mills of the Office of Minority Health. Uh, she's doing a great job, uh, a great job, and we're very glad to have you. And again, I'm just, this is a wonderful occasion. This is uh, very important. And we know that we here, um, mostly women in this room, will be carrying the information that we receive back to our communities, back to our respective workplaces, and back to our homes. We are the influencers of the family, we're the influencers of society, and we've really got to step up and reclaim that mantle. You know, the hand that rocks the cradle should rule the world. And right now, uh, you know, I think it's time for us to really um, step into our step into our roles as the, the leaders, the carriers, the, com the, the conveyors, and the influencers of our families and our community. So uh, God bless you all from uh, uh, the vendors, um, Ms. Thompson with the very um, nutritious and creative food in the orange bowls, uh, really a great idea. And to everyone here, and for all that you do year after year, day after day, although we're here for one day, we, knew that, we know that you work very hard every day of the year. And so I, I thank you for, all, for what you do, and God bless you, and I look forward to you know, talking to you more this afternoon and throughout the year, and seeing you back here next year this time. Thank you, Councilwomen, for your remarks. At this time, we'll bring up Dr. Jinwala. Dr. Jinwala is a cardiologist with University Hospitals, Harrington Heart and Vascular Institute, as well as an assistant professor of medicine at Case Western Reserve University. So at this time, we'll bring Dr. Jinwala to the stage. Let's welcome her. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. So, uh, you know, it's really a pleasure to be here. Thank you. I'm, I'm very grateful to uh, American Heart Association, Go Red for Women, um, for inviting me and for the City Hall. Um, 
So today we're going to talk a little bit about heart disease and what we can all do to live a better heart healthy life and especially what better day than Valentine's Day to do this so we can make those better choices for ourselves and our loved ones. So as, as, it was, as was already discussed, heart disease is the number one killer in the United States and worldwide. Every year, 600,000 people die of heart disease in the United States alone, with the financial burden of over 200 billion every year. So that's one of every four people die in the United States. That's one of every three women die, of, uh, die in the United States. And that's one person every minute dying of heart disease related complications in the United States. So some pretty um, stunning statistics here, right? Yeah. And it's also important to note that over 90% of women actually have more than one risk factor for heart disease. A lot of the women actually who have a heart attack compared to men, especially their first heart attack, have a lower risk of making it through that heart attack compared to men. Oftentimes, a heart, a heart attack is under-recognized or even not recognized in women. 25% of heart attacks are actually silent. Um, you know, a lot of patients can just um, have symptoms which are very vague, symptoms like indigestion, shortness of breath, fatigue, just some mild chest discomfort compared to patients and some patients who actually have more florid symptoms of heart attack and heart failure, like chest pain, you know, the typical chest pain associated with radiation, which goes to the neck and the jaw, is not commonly seen in a lot of these patients who have heart disease. Leg swelling, palpitations or fluttering in the heart, dizziness, all these things can point towards heart disease and heart problems. So um, today I'm going to talk to you and tell you a little bit about what you could do to get me out of business, um, or at least not really need my professional help. So the first important thing is to really know your numbers. So to see your health professional, go for your well baby visits, and actually get your screening test done. What is your blood pressure? What is your um, blood sugar control. If you have diabetes, what is your sugar control looking like? What is your body mass index, which is the weight divided by the height? The normal body mass index of less than 25 is normal. 25 to 30 suggests that you're overweight more than 30 you could obesity. Again, um, if you're smoking, quit smoking. So exercise and lead a healthy life. So again, all these things have been uh, discussed earlier and really stressed upon, and I can't stress these things enough. So what are some of the other things that, you know, going into these risk factors specifically that we could do? Blood pressure. So the normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. The abnormal blood pressure, when you see you have a blood pressure above 140, which is the upper number, and 90, the lower number, that's suggestive of high blood pressure. We see patients often who come in with heart attacks, strokes, or um, heart failure who've actually lived with blood pressures in the 180s for months. And um, they were told or they were not told um, to, if they weren't going regularly for their health visits, to get this, get this under better control. And then, once, and then you know, once they have a bad complication, these things come to light. So again, important to, um, it's really helpful if you have high blood pressure to buy a blood pressure cuff, and that can actually help monitor your blood pressures at home. What about diabetes? So diabetes is again another risk factor that you can control uh, by really taking better care of your um, blood sugars and uh, losing weight. Normally for women especially, the recommended amount of added sugar is uh, six teaspoons a day. One of the studies they did saw that most women were adding over or, or eating more than 22 teaspoons of added sugar. So again, things that can have added sugar, soda, Coke, baked goods, um, 
these are the things that are really important to, I mean, uh, you know, eat within limits and really avoid adding sugars. We talked about exercise. Exercise more than 30 minutes can actually reduce your risk of heart disease to th by 30 to 40 percent. So really important to get that Fitbit out or actually just get out and use your exercise uh, uh, bikes or just walk out in the weather, especially a great day like today, and um, just you know get those miles or those steps. Um, what about smoking? We talked about really important to reach out and get help with smoking cessation. If you are a smoker, this can reduce your risk of heart disease, of cancer, and of other complications related to um, smoking, such as lung disease. Important to um, also get that body mass index down, like we talked about. So um, these are really some important things that can help everyone lead a very healthy life. Um, so really uh, see your healthcare professionals, get those numbers out. Uh, the American Heart Association has laid out some seven simple steps that everyone can look at and incorporate into their lifestyles. So there are a lot of risk factors which are um, controllable and correctable. Of course, there are some which you can't control, like we talked about your age, gender, race, um, family history, history of prior heart attacks. But again, take control of those risk factors that you can actually control. So your heart is really in your hands. Um, you know, really try and live a healthy life and um, see your healthcare professional and do everything it takes to really live um, a better heart healthy lifestyle. So, all right, go red. Thank you. Dr. Jinwa, thank you so much for that information. I think sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to remember that there are some simple steps that we can take, just getting up every once in a while, walking around, getting up off the couch, getting out from behind the computer, getting out from just watching TV, maybe walking up one flight of stairs instead of taking the elevator, um, perhaps choosing a piece of fruit instead of um, a baked good as a dessert and looking at it as a treat as opposed to an everyday everyday thing. And as Councilwoman Brady indicated, quitting smoking is probably the number one thing you can do to prevent heart disease um, in, for yourself and also for the people around you. Um, but thank you very much here today. I want to thank everybody on the stage, the three wonderful council women who are strong advocates for women and um, heart disease here. I want to thank them. Frances Mills for all you do for the Office of Minority Health and making sure that events like this take place so that we can all learn what we need to learn and, um, and get this out to as many communities as possible. Dr. Junwana, thank you again for being here, and Brenda Parks for representing the American Heart Association, and Chief Walker Miner for all that you've done to stand for women in health um, um, for all these years, so thank you. And all of you for being here today, thank you, and the community for all of um, your engagement and interest in this um, very, very important issue. On behalf of the Cleveland Department of Public Health, we thank you for your presence here today, and enjoy your day, and happy Valentine's Day.